Hey guys, 8BitSquid here and welcome to this tutorial on how to get a object moving via inputs, uh, in this case it will be a keyboard in Unity using the Playmaker asset. Now this is really simple uh, and it won't take that long to do. So if you see on my scene here, we've got a player object which is just a capsule and on this I added a Polygon Collider 2D. I like to use the polygon colliders on most things because if it's not a circle or a square or rectangle shape, um, the polygon collider will map out the collider perfectly. So I'll see a polygon collider 2D and a rigid body 2D, all just set to how it is when you add it to the object, like default as a default. And then under constraints, I've frozen my position on the Z or Z. If I untick it, you'll see it will probably just fall over. In this case, it won't. But when, when it's moving, it will most likely fall over because of the momentum of it. Okay, so we've got all that sorted. We can just click on our player and have our playmaker window open if you don't have it set on your screen as long as you've got it installed it'll be over here and you just choose playmaker editor okay uh and also in this tutorial i am using unity here you see 2020.3.25 f1c1 this will work i believe in just about any version of unity using playmaker so we're just going to click on our player, I'll see the ground object here, just a uh, square sprite stretched into a rectangle with a box collider 2D to make it solid. <clears throat> so we're going to go to our player and we're going to add FSM. Now the first thing, what I like to do anyway, is in the inspector, give it a name so that we know what this uh, finite state machine will be doing. So, I'm just going to call this one movement, and you'll see it goes there, player movement. And this is handy, because if you've got multiple FSMs on one object, you can see what they are really easily. Okay, so, we're going to want two states, so it's going to add an extra state here. And we'll call this one, say, translate, and this one, get access. Because that's all we're doing there. And we're going to create two events. We're going to say get input and then say move. Okay, and then we're going to add get input to our translate state here and then move to our get axis. And we're just going to simply link them together. And we're just about ready to add our actions so we're going to go to the action browser option here and for this one we're going to want to get translate obviously i've got it here already but we say translate we're going to add that and also a next frame event and then for get axis we'll have the next frame event and also get axis okay so for translate Let's make sure our translate option or our translate <coughs> uh, action is the first thing. And we're going to go to where it says the X here. And we're going to click on here. And we're going to create a new global variable. And we're going to call this one uh, movement X. Okay. And then uh, it might not add it straight away. So you might have to click on it again and go to globals and click on movement X to add it in there. And then send event in the next frame event. We're going to get that to get input. And just minimize them. Okay. And then for get axis. Now, very likely you haven't changed the name of your axis or axes. But uh, if you want to check, we can just go to edit, uh, project settings, input manager here. We'll go to axes. And then we just go where it says horizontal, and you want to make sure the name is identical. 
So if you just want to be safe, you can just literally copy and then paste it. Or if you're sure you can make sure you're going to spell it right. It's not too hard to spell horizontal, obviously. But if you don't spell it correctly as it is there, it will not work. So we're just going to paste that in there. Now, multiplier. This is going to affect our speed. Okay, so I'll show you that one in a moment. But for now, we're just going to go to here. And we're going to put the next frame event and set it to move. And I have no idea why you want to do that, but we'll do that. Okay, and we'll set the store as movement X there. Right, now if we hit play, obviously it's going to probably compile here for a second. Okay, you'll see on here, it's going back and forth. Just make sure we click, and then as you'll see, when I press down the arrow key, you won't see me pressing it, but if you press the arrow keys, you'll see him slowly moving. And when then we let go, he will stop moving. Now, he's quite slow. So, what we could do is set the multiply here to be 9, and then hit play. <clears throat> okay, and you'll see then he moves a lot faster but for me what I like to do I like to create a global variable I'm just gonna call it speed and then we'll go to our variables here click on the little cog here and choose global variables and this will show us all our variables here so you see speed which is a float and we can set the value here we'll set that to 9 <clears throat> And now, if we hit play, compile again, you see our player will now move faster. And you, you can mess around with that variable for speed to make it to something what you like for the speed yourself. All right, and that is it. Now we have our moving character, moving in a 2D plane just left and right. Okay, so obviously when you've done that, make sure you save. And then that is it for this uh, tutorial. Um, in the next one, we'll be making the character jump. It's a simple jumping one. And hopefully I'll see you in that one. And until next time, 8-Bit Squid out.